Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Five Games, Five Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk. Fruitworm is one of the simplest ideas for a game, and one of the easiest to program. The Electron has a few versions of it, the idea being to wander around a small maze, avoiding hazards, eating fruits, growing in size, and not doubling back on yourself or biting your own tail. Fruitworm was originally published in your computer magazine, and it's one of the few machine code arcade versions of the game. Unfortunately, despite looking quite nice, it's actually much harder to play than this vidcat makes it look. The trouble is that it often doesn't appear to respond to key presses, particularly if you want to move in two directions in quick succession, i.e. up and then left, to avoid an obstacle. The game sometimes doesn't register one or more of the commands, leading to the inevitable death and frustration. This is a shame because, apart from that, it's quite a good game. Well, 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 what have we here? Perhaps the most shameless rip-off of all time, courtesy of the micro-user. Poor old Nightmare Maze, a blue ribbon budget title, written all over again as Monster Maze. At first sight, I was surprised by just how similar Monster Maze is to Nightmare Maze. If you compare the two, they look so pixel perfect, you wonder if the author just stole the Nightmare Maze code. Indeed, everything right down to maze layout and the keys used as game controls are identical. However, Monster Maze comes out the inferior game, because after the first three identical levels, Nightmare Maze has more, but Monster Maze wraps around to level one again. Now of all the games to pick to steal in this sort of way, why you'd want to choose a two quid budget game that wasn't very addictive to begin with, and then remake only the first three levels of it, is a bit beyond me. Ideas that the micro user must have been running very thin. Stairway to Hell was probably the Electron's first multi-load game, and features 16 levels of so-called fun. It's a platform game done unusually in Mode 1. This allows for very high resolution graphics, but with the obvious disadvantage that there's not much memory left over for level design. To get around this, levels are loaded in in sets of four. Each set also has a different theme, as you journey deeper and deeper down the stairway of the title. Stairway to Hell is a ridiculously fiddly game, Playing it is based purely on learning exactly what to do and the order in which to do it. Jumps, pauses and climbs need to be timed to within fractions of a second. A single slip up and you have to start all over again. This might not be so bad if you could count on your sprite to behave himself, but you can't. Often he'll leap twice when you only wanted a single bound and the second leap will usually take him right off the edge of a cliff. Later levels, to which you can skip by pressing space, are cluttered and Bizarrely, level 2 seems to be completely impossible. Half marks. Now, Ali Pally is a quirky title, the type of game that seems typically an Acorn 8-bit game. It takes place on the hallowed grounds of a computer exhibition, and most of the big names of the day are exhibiting there. You foolishly came along with your children in tow, and now must balance a quest for computer goodies with making sure that they don't wander into the office and report themselves lost. Other than milling about looking for flashing white squares, there are two features. You can visit the bar in order to stock up on energy, and if one of your children does wander to the office, you must visit it immediately to reclaim him. As the levels continue, the number of children you've bred increases. The response time is sluggish and the sprite movement is jerky, but the biggest flaw is actually not game dynamics, but situational ones. If this is meant to be a crowded exhibition, then where are all the other patrons? And for the greatest part of the action, your children have got a line of sight to you at all times. So why are they wandering to the office all the time to get you into trouble? Bastards. Freeway Frog is a clone of the ever-popular Frogger game. Firstly, as is usual, you need to cross an interstate highway. In Freeway Frog, this consists of a whopping six lanes of traffic. Secondly, you have to cross a pond, which introduces six more precarious jumps. The sprite design here is pretty good, with multicoloured cars and pond life. Perhaps the only visual disappointment is your own frog. However, he does react well to key presses, and he can be moved forward, left, right and backwards. The idea is to successfully leap, 
across both land and sea five times per sheet. With five frogs, you can usually get through at least the first few sheets without problem. There's nothing Freeway Frog does better or worse than the other versions available. There's just more congestion than most here.